We're going to graph tangent and cotangent now. We're going to graph tangent first, and we don't know what it looks like. It's going to look different than the other four graphs that we just got through. So we're going to do the clueless method. <clears throat> and then when we're done graphing tangent, we're going to just graph the reciprocal, which is cotangent. So again, clueless method is what you use when you don't know what's going on. So I'm going to take the exact same x values that we took before, which are basically the uh, small ones starting at 0, going the positive direction. So I'm going to tan, tan 0 is 0, tangent can be a little trickier to memorize. Just remember it's sine over cosine, and if you can remember sine and cosine values, you get the tangent values. We're gonna need decimal approximations for these. Pi over four is nice and easy, that's one. Tangent pi over three is square root three, and pi over two is undefined. And of course, just like before, that means vertical asymptote right there. Uh, we can see our x coordinate of our vertical asymptote will be pi over 2. All right, that's enough to get started on our graph. So we're just going 0 to pi over 2. Oh, look at that line. 0 to pi over 2. I'm plotting a bunch of points. So I'm um, drawing this a little bit bigger. And let's see. We'll just label some. X value is pi over 4. That's not pi over 6. That's pi over 6. Pi over 3. All right. Um, now we got 0. All right. So at 0, we got 0. Pi over 2, the vertical asymptote. So that's just the first and the last right there. Those, in my opinion, is like the easiest to graph of all these. Now we're going to graph the regular points. So we got pi over 6, comma, 1 over square root 3. Now instead of getting out a calculator and estimating, <clears throat> so this looks like it's 1 and negative 1. I'm just going to arbitrarily pick where uh, 1 divided by square root 3 is. It's going to be less than 1 because we're taking 1 and dividing by a number bigger than 1. Uh, let's say that's somewhere right about here. And then regular square root 3, we're going to have to graph that guy as well. That's bigger than 1. It's between 1 and 2. So let's just say it's, it's actually it's a little bigger than that. You don't have to be super, super precise on these guys. And if I labeled that, jeez, oh, that's 2. So we got 1. Two, and then I just basically decided where I was going to approximate the other values. And again, all I need to do with square root 3 to make a graph that's close to being accurate is just put it between 1 and 2. 1 over square root 3 is between 0 and 1. So I'm just estimating where they are. We're going to need to do the same thing down here. Eventually, we'll need negative values as well. So I'll say that, negative 1 over square root 3, and I'll say that is negative square root 3. All right, we're just going to start plotting points now. So we got 0 already, um, 1 over square root 3, pi over 6, 1 over square root 3, pi over 4, 1, pi over 3, square root 3, right about there. <clears throat> and then the next thing we have is a vertical asymptote. So we need to connect these four points together nicely. Connecting them as smooth as I can. Well, I can do a little better than that. Good enough. Now I keep going to the right, but obviously it doesn't go like that to the right. We have to approach our vertical asymptote properly. So we're going to approach it by going up there like that. All right, so that's a little bit of the tangent graph. Now what we're going to do is keep going to the right. 
I could fill up my table uh, all the way down to pi. That would be a reasonable thing to do. And then get five more points or four more points, plot them up. But what I'm gonna do instead is think about the unit circle and what tangent looks like first quadrant versus second quadrant. So what's different between first and second quadrant? Here we had positive, positive. Over here, second quadrant, we go negative, positive. So basically, we're gonna have negative values. Uh, when do we hit zero? <clears throat> tangent is zero right down there. So the next place we're gonna have zero is when we hit pi. We're gonna have an x-intercept. And in between, all the values in here, all these x values were negative. And we start at, well, I, I could say negative undefined right here, but a, a huge negative number. And then we slowly, as we go down, the x coordinate, not the x coordinate, the tangent value uh, goes back to zero. So the curve looks like that right there. Not completely to scale, but that's good enough for us. So this is our uh, one period of tangent. That's only one period. Tangent and cotangent have different periods than sine and cosine. So tangent and cotangent have period of pi. If I drew a second period, I'll do that in the blue color. If I drew a second period, I'd have another x-intercept, vertical asymptote in between. And the graph would look like that. It's the same pattern repeated. So that's the second period right there. I could draw a third period. Same thing, vertical asymptote. So there's a third period. So I don't want to clutter this graph up too much. So let's delete this stuff. Come on, eraser. All right, so we'll just draw a stylized version with less information, easier to remember. We're only going out to pi. We have vertical asymptote in between. And you do need to keep track of the x value, the x coordinate of this vertical asymptote. And it's pi over two. And start zero. End is zero. That's all you need for tangent right there. So next up we're gonna do cotangent. <clears throat> so we're gonna take this graph and reciprocate it. And it's the same process we did before. I'm not gonna redraw the tangent graph, I got it right there, but I am going to reciprocate it. So we're going zero to pi, just like a tangent function. All right, reciprocate. That means x-intercepts are gonna become vertical asymptotes. So let's get those going first. Vertical asymptote, so at the beginning and end of our period, there's vertical, now let me get a different color here. Man, that's too skinny. That'll work. Vertical asymptote and vertical asymptote right on the y-axis. All right, next up. Oh, what about the original vertical asymptote that was undefined? Well, let's think about that. Here's what we saw as undefined. Uh, what is the 
reciprocal. So in this, there, in math, there's no try, there's only do. So if I write the reciprocal, and then we have multi-story fraction. So we're basically getting uh, one divided by one is just one, so one times zero. Our reciprocal of undefined is actually zero, meaning we get an x-intercept where our original function had a vertical asymptote. That's a little bit strange. Uh, but if you think about the way reciprocals work, if you reciprocate twice, you should get back where you started. That's pretty clear if you got a number like a two and then you reciprocate it to one half. If you reciprocate it, one over a half is two. So that's the same as two. And if you reciprocate again, you get a half. Reciprocate again, you get two, et cetera, et cetera. So this reciprocation operation uh, if you do it twice, it undoes itself. All right, last thing, we need to actually graph. And we'll go back to blue for that. So we're gonna graph and I'm gonna pick some point. We'll just think about that point and that point right there. Um, I wanna grab the Y values that are one and negative one because they'll reciprocate to themselves. So it'll be something like that and that. And this graph looks like this. And we definitely don't need that y axis. Way. Oh no. I mean, that much y-axis. All right, that's our cotangent graph. So we got tangent, cotangent, and we got our all of our other graphs above. So I think you've done enough transformations. Well, if you haven't done enough, uh, watching me do more probably won't help. Um, you will need to go and practice. So I recommend you... Uh, definitely get some practice graphing. Uh, there's also the backwards question, which will be covered relatively well on web work. And that is given a graph, can you tell me where it came from?